Then like a month later, we found ourselves, me, her, and, and uh, Timmy, and the costume designer, makeup artist, and, and, and hairdresser, all uh, in the house of Peter Spears, yeah. the producer. Right. And we made makeup tests, and we made costume tests, and that was our first step into these characters, and in which I could see the two together. And immediately I felt like, huh? like a lightning bolt, and bam! See what happens? Yeah. What's gonna happen? Something bad's gonna happen? Yeah. Oh, outside! We're going outside. Did you enjoy hassling people, man? Is that what you do on Saturdays? You better jerk it off? Right. Give me some hassling. Welcome to Behind the Lens. Today, he actually needs no introduction. I can just mention his movies. Uh, Call Me By My Name, Suspiria, I Am Love, A Bigger Splash. Right now, Bones and All, an amazing documentary called Salvatore, Shoemaker of Dreams. So many shorts, so many things you don't know what he did that you're going to see and th that are in your life. Please welcome Luca Guadagnino. Hello. I mean, uh, <laughs> very happy to be here. I'm so glad you could come by here. Um, such a fan, as you know, of so many of your movies, which uh, Bones and All, I saw at the Telluride Film Festival late into the festival on the last day, just before our bus picked us up to go back to the airport. It was my last one there. I'm sort of glad I saw it that way because it was a quieter afternoon and I just went over and man, it wasn't what I expected. You know, mm. you hear things there and it's a true love story about these two people who can't help themselves in so many levels. I just thought it was fascinating. I'm curious as to why now in your career, why now Bones and All was the movie you wanted to make. I think, thank you for first, because it's yeah. beautiful how you put it. Uh, I think that uh, um, I, I being, we all been going through a lot of, a lot. Yeah. You know, the COVID has been a lot for all of us. I, I actually am back in LA after three years. Last time I was here was December 19, which was like a couple of months before everything right. happened. Absolutely. Um, and when I received the script that Dave Kajanek wrote, he was developing this with Antonio Campos, not with me. So he, the movie was almost like ready to be gone, oh. going. And I received this script. I don't know, but there was something about these uh, disenfranchised, roaming America, looking for a way of contact with the other, trying to, to overcome the impossibility of their condition that was very telling to me. I felt very close to that kind of uh, impossibility, terminality. And I told David, I think we must make sure that this becomes purely a love story. Because love, in my reading of it, it's always about overcoming the impossibility. Right. Finding yourself into the gaze of the other and being accepted for who you are. Right. And that can be said as a terminal thing of these characters. They are something that they don't want to be. Right. And they want to defeat their own nature, but that's impossible. Right. Uh, Ian Foster would say, can the leopard change its spot? Right? Yeah. Uh, and yet, they prove oneself, but also us, that there is this strength in love that might give a glimpse, as uh, Trent Reznor sings in the movie, just a minute of feeling home, of feeling together and togetherness. And that's what was so moving about it, I thought. And just right from the very opening of this movie, and I don't want to give too much away because most people haven't seen it yet. They will. It's opening for uh, Thanksgiving, and uh, uh, so everyone will have a chance to see it. But there, right from the opening, you see how Taylor Russell is so good in this, uh, how she can't help herself here, how she's drawn to it. And it's a shocking 
moment when you reveal that. But I never felt this was graphic. I didn't think it was overdone, you know, or went into the Grand Guignol horror Thank uh, you. element, which it easily could have in the wrong hands. I don't, I, when I was a kid, I was very much into the movies of shock. I love those kind of shocking films. Right. I, I, I really groomed myself through those films. <laughs> but in growing up and in becoming a filmmaker, I kind of felt the responsibility of the filmmaker somehow. We drive the imagery of people. Right. We make them see things through our point of view, yeah. and we might make them change their point of view, or even worse, we can give people a reassurance of their worst instincts. Yeah. That's why I immediately decided that I didn't want to have any shock value here, and I didn't want to use the idea of these characters being eaters, being cannibals, as a way into a sort of sensorialism and sensationalism. Yeah. What I was interested in was how these people struggle with their nature. So when it came to that, for me and all the people that made the movie, and particularly the actors, we really were focusing less on the actual effect of what they were doing and more on the moral, emotional resonances of that. Yeah. So I'm very glad you say that. Oh, yeah. Well, like I said in the beginning here, I was expecting something else maybe. You know, this comes from studio, Hollywood financing, I believe. Uh, no, this is a... It? This is a movie that we, I got the script, I said to Dave, if, Dave, if Timothy does it, I do it. Timothy did it. And I went to some friends in Italy and I said, would you finance my new movie with Timothy Chalamet? Great. And they said, sure. <laughs> and we got uh, the money to make it. Oh, good. And we did it. And then only after I, I sold it to MGM. Oh, I was curious because I think in a typical situation if it is uh, going through a studio or something like that they might have opinions as to well why don't you like you know put a little more blood in there or do a little more here you maybe know? more make it more genre yes more genre and and less you know because to describe it to somebody you know when you talk about just cannibalism that's not what this movie's about great it isn't what this movie's about it's a fable and yeah. as a fable you have your heroes <laughs> going through the woods right and being challenged by uh, things that they, that they are being, uh, in a way, they have to overcome. Yeah. And then ultimate challenge is to overcome impossibility and finding love, yeah. like in Fables. I know. I'll be very interested to see the audience reaction because you have, again, you're working, as you mentioned, with Timothy Chalamet, who has a very devoted young following here. And it'll be interesting, I think, they're going to love it. I think this movie will be a hit. I'm now on tape. If he saying says it, <laughs> I'm on tape saying this, but I thought this the minute I saw it. I actually think this is, first of all, different enough, unexpected enough, and it will be talked about, uh, uh, particularly among young younger viewers who beautiful I uh, are yeah. not prevented from seeing it. Um, but Timothy Chalamet and then Taylor Russell. Um, Talk about the casting here and, and working with him again, in particular, getting him involved in this. For About him, I can tell you that the second he this character comes into the page, I said, I said to myself, this must be Timmy. Oh. I felt it immediately. So I called Dave, not having finished the script yet. I said, listen, it's beautiful. I'm going to finish it. But if Timothy does it, I'm going to do it. I finished the script. I was... I was, I was being driven through Europe, I remember. I was coming from San Sebastian Film Festival to Rome, to Milano, sorry, to my home. I was going. Uh, then I called him and I said, I have this thing. I don't know why, but I feel that that's something that we should do together and that you could be amazing in it. And he was in Italy, actually, at the time because he was reshooting something for June and so he was coming back and forth from Budapest. And we met and, and there was immediate sparkle there. Like, I knew how react, the reaction of Timothy was solid in this. Uh, I tried to do things with him in the past that, you know, maybe you weren't the right thing mm -hmm. after I called you by your name. Right. Uh, and that tells you how intelligent he is, you know, like as this, no, he knows what to choose. Yeah. And then we started a very intense conversation with Dave, between me, him, and Timothy. Because Timothy had a very beautiful point of view. Uh, he thought that the character of Lee should have been as complicated, as lost as Marin, right. it shouldn't be like the kind of jock who comes along and helps the girl. No. He wanted it to be more complex, more, more lost, yeah. even more so than Marin herself. Right. 
And that, that led us to a new draft of the script that then became our shooting draft. Oh, wow. So that was immediate for me, Timothy. Yeah. And Taylor, uh, I sat with the script for a few days, and then I realized that I was thinking of these movie waves. Yeah, which is, she's wonderful in she's it. She's amazing. And not enough people saw that movie. I loved that movie, and I loved her in that movie. Yeah. So I, 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 I called uh, her agent, uh, Dani Strazen. I said, Dani, can you make me be in touch with this actress that I have? I don't know her. Yeah. She, or we organized a FaceTime, and then I, I met this beautiful young lady who looks like Bambi in, in the <laughs> Disney movie, and beautiful eyes. Oh, wow. And then you see this kind of like innocence, but at the same time, I felt there was something very determined about her. Yeah. Something, something very strong about Taylor as a woman yeah. and as an actress. So I, it was very quickly, quick for me to tell her, I want you to play the role. I didn't audition. I just gave the role you to... You just gave it to yeah. her. Yeah. They're perfect together in it. And Mark Rylance freaked me out. I mean, when that guy I gets mean, into a role... <laughs> but when he, that guy gets into a role, <laughs> there is nothing for anybody. No, right? He is one I mean. <laughs> he was like, I remember I was in Milano, I was, uh, I, I FaceTimed him to, on the roll, he was kind and very you know, sure. soft-spoken, oh, yeah. <laughs> very articulate, as you can expect, and he was like, okay, I think I know this, I have to do this character. Then we came all in America, preparing the movie, we made the first fitting, and already you can see how he was changing his body language and his body wow. position and the voice and everything, Whoa! And then when we were shooting for 11 days, I couldn't meet Mr. Rylance. I was meeting Sally all the time. Unbelievable. But in between days of shooting, we were having fun because there was the European football uh, championship. Uh, we won, Italy won, and okay. England lost. Uh, <laughs> uh, so it was <laughs> a strangely bonding moment. I love Mark. I mean, he's one of the greatest actors living. Uh, I know you just met Tilda, so they are like Tilda uh, and Mark Ryan's. I mean, uh, yeah. I, I should put them in the same movie now. <laughs> they probably never worked together. I don't think they? so. No. I looked at all of her credits and things. No, they never worked together. <laughs> but you know, like I, I, there is a movie that influenced me very much that is uh, Patrice Chéreau Intimacy. Uh -huh. who that, uh, that's the first time I met Ryan's in a movie, 1996, and Carrie Fox is in it. If you, if you remember the movie, or whoever haven't seen the movie wants to see the movie, you can see how bold an actor is he. Right. How like really like relentless as an actor is he, and I admire that very very much. He's so so amazing. And speaking of uh, Chalamet as well, uh, there are all kinds of rumors that Call Me by Your Name will get some sort of a sequel. Is that alive or is that all? Peter, just I I. Made up? <laughs> no, it's me. I I, I I did all with my hands. <laughs> By saying what I'm repeating here, that I love those characters, but I, it's right. true that I love all the characters in my movies. Yeah. But I, those characters, I feel like there is something about them that could be told about them, yeah. who they become, particularly Elio. Who is Elio? Where Elio goes? What life is going to bring Elio to? And I remember this beautiful uh, group of movies that Tra Francois Truffaut made. Oh, yeah. Uh, at the Antoine Duanel cycle. So great. Yeah, they're doing a whole retrospective right now in L.A. At the oh, Aero, no, Aero I didn't know Theater. that. Yeah, in Santa Monica. Oh. Bed and board, stolen kisses, 400 blows. I thought, like, if there is an Antoine Duanel cycle, there can be an Elio Perman cycle. Absolutely. We'll see. We'll see. We have time ahead of us, so we'll yeah. see. Okay, that would be interesting. Not I'd a love sequel, to. but... A con chapters. Con yeah, chapters. Growing up. Yeah. Also, like, you know these movies of, of filmmakers like uh, Eric Romer, or let's face it, Spielberg. Like you see these great directors yeah. bringing their cast along with them throughout yes. time, yeah. and you see them aging and becoming together. That's right. That I love about cinema very, very much. I love that. And I think the idea of bringing together actors that I've been working with, not only on different movies, but on the same family, on the same group of, act of characters would be kind of yeah. beautiful. Well, that would be something to look forward to for sure. Um, you also uh, are just finishing up a movie I can't wait to see called Challengers. This is with Zendaya and uh, Josh O'Connor, Josh Mike Feist, and uh, who's when I saw West Side Story, Spielberg's West Side Story, I said I, they were all great, but I said, "Who is he? Who is that guy who plays Rip?" These three in the movie are phenomenal. There is something so humongous they do in the play, in the movie, the way they play, the way they embody yeah. these characters. It's a great script by Justin Karitskas. Yeah, it's my first comedy in a way. Oh. It's very like 
fast, <laughs> fast and like very like about comedy of manners. Right. And the way this tree portrays these really like uh, um, complicated people in a complicated uh, triangle, oh, wow. it's fun to watch. Mike is Mike is like possessed by the character in a way that is amazing. But all of them, they're fantastic. But I want to say that I, 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 Challengers is many dreams come true, and particularly one, which is to work with the wonderful Amy Pascal. Oh. She proposed me the movie, and uh, I was looking forward to work with her for a long time. And so when she offered me this, I couldn't resist. I said, sure. I'm gonna do it. That's good. It's set in the world of tennis. Yeah, yeah. we have Brad Gilbert, the great Brad Gilbert, oh. doing our consultant of, on tennis. Wow. Not only is a wonderful man and very funny, but he knows everything about it. Yeah. And I didn't know anything about tennis. <laughs> I was like dry, nothing. Okay. Now I know. Yeah. Now I know. Now I know. <laughs> now you know. And I and it's probably my first movie that I drew everything oh. because I need to control. I needed to control the world that I didn't know. So okay. we made a lot of rehearsals. We made a lot of acting rehearsals. I never rehearsed. This was the first time I rehearsed. Oh, wow. We made a lot of tennis rehearsal, and I was drawing and drawing. It's fun. Oh. I was. I, it was really great fun of my life doing this. When are we going to see this? I don't know. I cannot say. I think the movie is going to be for next year. Yeah. Right now, it's actually scheduled on August 11th. Oh, okay. All right. Right before the U.S. Open. I, I guess, guess, right? Yeah, maybe they're... That's strategically MGM thinking. thinking uh, it's not a bad, <laughs> it's not a bad thinking. I love feet. They talk to me. As I take them in my hands, I feel their strengths, their weaknesses, their vitality, or their failings. A good foot, its muscles firm, its arch strong, is a delight to touch. A masterpiece of divine workmanship. My desire to work with feet was unrelenting, and it took hold of me profoundly when I was still a small boy in a remote southern Italian village, 90 kilometers east of Naples. You have another movie that I stumbled onto and watched um, a while back uh, that Sony Classics is releasing, and it's a documentary, Salvatore Shoemaker of Dreams, about Ferragamo, and you think going into it, it's all about shoes. This is a movie about Hollywood. That's what it's I It's a movie about. about a maverick yeah. who is part of the people who made Hollywood. I, in Santa Barbara, which I didn't even realize, you know, until it moved. But it's an amazing story. It's a it's a tribute to a great person, Salvatore Ferragamo, yeah. a real underdog and a character who played always by his own rhythm and music. Yeah. But that found community and ownership and belonging here. Yeah. He came all the way right. from the south of Italy yeah. in this little, little village yeah. where there was the, probably the life at the time was more 19th century than 20th century right. and crossed the ocean yeah. by himself at the age of 14, 15. Unbelievable. Arrived in the East Coast, decided yeah. he didn't want to have to, anything to do with the industry of shoemaking yeah. because he felt he was an artisan, not uh, an industrialist. Right. And traveled and crossed this country by himself on a train, landing in Santa Barbara and meeting people like Cecil B. DeMille yeah. <laughs> and Mary Pickford yeah. and friend, becoming friend of them and immediately understanding what meant what they were doing here. Yeah. In the imagery, star system, amazing. It is unbelievable. But it's a, it's a movie that I'm very privileged of having done because of being able to dig my hands into the beautiful archives, everything that could, I could un unearth from these archives. Oh. Many amazing, he, he shot super eight movies when he was like 20, yeah. like in, in the tens of last century, we have them in the movie. But also I met some amazing people. Like I met like Marcus Scorsese talks about the invention of self in America. Right. Yeah. Or we have Deborah Nadelman who talks about this, yeah. how much a shoe can tell a story, not only through, uh, not just the story in itself. Yeah. Or we have great historians like yeah. uh, I think your Todd McCarthy is in our movie. I have sat here. Todd sat in that chair. We do a thing together called Take Two. And I have on more than one occasion brought up this movie and said, and Todd, 
is in it. He's one of the stars of Salvatore. And he had not seen it at that point. I hope he's seen it. Can you review the movie? No, he can't. He's in it. (laughs) Uh, No. Uh, Well, no, I don't want him. You can review the movie. I I will review it. Great. Yeah, you're right. I can't have him review himself. But But we know we spoke to so many historians of film, historians of Hollywood, historians of star system. And then it's, I think we have more than 100 people talking in the movie, which I think is beautiful because it's so good to be able to discover things through the perspective of other people. Oh, totally. It's so, so eye opening. And I have to say at the end, Uh, there's no spoiler alert here because this stands on its own. But Busby Berkeley would be proud is all I can say. There is a, a sequence with shoes and only shoes. It's amazing. And that sequence is directed by the wonderful Pess. Mm-hmm. I invited Pess to create a movie within the movie, and yeah. I said, I think we need to make those shoes become as light and as fabulous as it's in a movie a by idea. Bubsy Berkeley. Yeah. He made it, and he handed it to me, and it was so beautiful. So I'm very ha- honored that this movie is a sort of co-direction. It's like 95% is me, and 5% is Pess. And that's great. And Pess is amazing. And that's a great idea, though, to have this in, because it's just a, you know, it's like a almost an animation sequence, you know. It is, with this. it is. And it's so, so interesting all the way. That's definitely one to see here. So many things you're doing, you know, and I, I was just talking with Tilda Swinton. She wants to work with you again. A lot of these uh, actors keep coming back and... Chalamet and, and on and on, you know, uh, it, the well is endless here, it seems, with you. If you look at Luca's filmography on IMDb, <laughs> these movies that I've just mentioned here are just a drop in the bucket. You have never stopped with a camera since you were 15, I think. Is that right? I never. I never. And you look at it and the body of work, however short, long, whatever the movie, you, you have to make movies. I do. That's what I am. I'm a director. I have to do the movies. But you keep, you don't let, you know, seven years, eight years of development stop you from constantly working. I kind of learned, I mean, I dreamt of Hollywood like Salvatore forever. Like he did Hollywood. I dreamt of Hollywood. <laughs> and I, I kind of under, I knew Hollywood because I, you know, I was studying it. When I came here for the first time, I kind of was ready to understand what I didn't want to do. And I didn't want to fall into the trappings of the development process or to become someone who could be used as a sort of like butler of the system, like you make a movie for them. And uh, with all the respect for the noble art of being a butler, but I think cinema is another thing. And so I decided that, A, I was not going to sit on a project for more than enough if it's not making it move on to the next. Right. And I was going to be able, I was going to try to be able to express myself and not to administrate a movie set. Hmm. I tried. <laughs> I was lucky. I've been lucky so far. I, all right. I think it's more than luck. But, uh, you know, you can't have the kind of career you've had and keep calling it luck because, uh, you know, you're, you're, a, you're a modern master. And also, I think you're a student of film. And so you know what's come before you, and uh, that that was a, a sort of secret weapon. But you know, yeah. Scorsese taught me that indirectly, and later directly, Bernardo Bertolucci taught me that. Yeah. We are the outcome of the past, and we have to think of the future always looking behind us. We can't think that we are the first to do things. Right. It doesn't work like that. Amazing. Well, Luca, more power to you. Thank uh, you. Bones and all. Check it out. This is a, an amazing movie and a Salvatore Shoemaker of Dreams. Uh, best of luck. Can't wait to see a Challenger. Thank you. I'm so happy. Thank you. Thanks so much.